Good morning. It is great to be worshiping with you this morning here at First United Methodist Church, Bella Vista. Um, we're, we're hoping the weathermen are wrong, but if they're not, we're so glad you chose to come out and be with us before you get snowed in. So uh, it's great to be here worshiping with you this morning. And if you would, let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful morning. And even though it's cold outside, it's warm in here, and we give you thanks for entering into this place of worship with us this morning. We pray that your spirit would descend upon us. You would make your presence known in a new way to us this morning, that we would feel your love all around us with those whom we are worshiping with this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm Jan Lowe, Minister of Congregational Care. We just want to say welcome to everybody that's here. If you happen to be a guest with us today, we want you to know how pleased we are that you're worshiping with us. And if you are a guest for the first time, we have some information we'd like to share with you, the way you can help us make that happen. Before you leave here today, when you step into the Narthex, please just give us your name and address at the desk out there. When we have that, later this week, someone will stop by your home, not for a visit, but just to give you an insulated mug that is yours to keep. That mug is gonna have information in it that tells about the many ministries and the many ways that we have in this church to serve our Lord, to serve people in our community and beyond, and to serve one another. In the meantime, we just ask that everyone enjoys the fellowship that is in this place today. We do have attendance pads. I believe they've been passed. If someone new has come into the row that you're in, pass them one more time. Uh, when we see your signature on that pad, we know that you were here, but it also helps us to figure out who wasn't able to be here this morning. With that information, we can do a little bit better job of staying in touch with our church family. So we thank you for helping us with that. If you will open your bulletins to ministry opportunities and events, I've got just a few things, uh, upcoming things to, to share with you. The first one is uh, Lent. Lent begins this Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. We have two services, one at 11.45, the noontime, and the second one at 6 o'clock. So two services, and we hope that you can be here for one or both of those if you like. And immediately following the service will be a luncheon. And we're having soup, I believe, soup. <laughs> so uh, we hope that everybody will, will come and stay for that, a couple of good soups and, and just a really special service. And then every Wednesday at 1145 until the Wednesday before Easter, we will have a Lenten service with a devotional being provided and a luncheon immediately following. And all the rest of the luncheons are being provided by circles of the United Methodist Women. So we appreciate them helping us with that. Uh, there is going to be a study that begins on this Tuesday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Reverend Albert Fisher will be leading that study, and it is entitled Living the Lord's Prayer. So uh, if you have the time, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please sign up to attend Albert's class. Uh, Albert also does a monthly meeting with those single men in the church who have lost a loved one, and that is going to be... Uh, this Tuesday also at 11.30 a.m. So we hope that uh, you men that are already attending that or, or any man in the church who has lost a loved one, please be welcome to, to come and participate in that. With that, let's just have a very special service this morning. God bless and thank you.
please remain standing and join with me in our call to worship. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's my turn. God is good. <laughs> And all the time. Will you be sure to share the warmth and the love that is in this place with those who are around you as you greet one another in love? Good morning.
morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from Zephaniah 317. Listen for the word of God. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As the ushers come forward, may we search our hearts in love to give back to the God who first loved us and to know that every dollar given is an act of worship to our Lord. Redeemer and sustainer God, you rejoice over us with praise and loud thanksgiving. You sing songs 
joyfully over us. You renew us and refresh us in your love. We stand in awe at the magnitude of your love, and we humbly return these gifts to you. Use them for your glory and to build your kingdom. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. seated. We come now to the time in our worship where we share the joys and the concerns of our church family and lift them up to our God. We have joys this morning. We have two births within our church family. One within the family itself, um, Lincoln Joseph Morgan. Lincoln was born on Lincoln's birthday, the 12th of February, to Matt and Lori Morgan, um, and his, his sisters, sisters, both are sisters, I think, right? Both sisters? Okay. Um, Ava Claire and Jaden are his sisters, so the yellow rosebud is in his honor, and the pink rosebud is in honor of the first great-granddaughter of Judy Canadal, and her name is Myla Vey Pitt, and she was born on February the 2nd. And back in the back is another baby. So that's three babies this morning. How exciting that is. We are only aware of one of our church family being in the hospital 
Lynn Muirhead uh, was in North, uh, is in Northwest Bentonville. She is being transferred to Highlands tomorrow. That's the expectation. And so she is doing better and taking a step toward re rehab. So we are glad, glad for those things. The church that we ask that you lift up this week is Bella Vista Christian Church. Please be in prayer for the pastors, the congregation, and the ministries that they provide to the Bella Vista community. Also know that there will be a complete list of prayer um, concerns and joys to be lifted up in your prayer time during the week. That will be available at the back of the sanctuary as you leave the service. And as we prepare to go to God in prayer, please join me in the prayer song. Most gracious God, God of everlasting love that knows no bounds, we are so thankful that you have created us in your image, created us in your love, that you call us back to you in that love, that you cover us and sustain us in that love that you call us beloved, that you, God, are love itself. We lift up our prayers of joys and concerns this morning, joys of births, brand new life. Oh, Lord, such hope and promise and expectation. Thank you. We lift up the concerns of those who are in rehab and hospitalized and ask that you provide healing in the days ahead, healing to their body and healing to their spirit. Lord, forgive us when we fail to love our neighbors as you would have us do, when we fail to care for those who grieve, for those who are ill, for those who are injured, for those who are hospitalized, for the hungry, for the lonely, the lost, and the least. Forgive us when we fail to rejoice with those who rejoice. Lord, we know that you made us in, our, in your image, and when we love, we are of you. Draw us toward yourself and toward each other in the knowledge of this. Lord, this morning we lift up Pastor Zach. Send your Holy Spirit to rest upon him that his message may be filled with the craziness of your love. That it may inspire us anew and afresh with the knowledge of who you are and who you call us to be. Lord, we lift these prayers and all the unspoken prayers on our hearts up to you this day as we join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Well, it's been a while, so it is, uh, it's almost like you, you get the uh, first-time jitters all over again, but it is great to uh, be here with you this morning as um, Brother Jamie has some time off, and, and so uh, this morning we are looking at uh, crazy love, and, and so if you would like to uh, follow along in your Bible, or we've made it really easy this morning, you can just turn to the front of the bulletin, and it's right there, and you can read along as we read our scripture this morning. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, last week we sort of officially ended our sermon series on relationship realities, but today we're sort of carrying that theme um, over and discussing this crazy love aspect. And, and so I guess, you know, in, in some ways, maybe this is the unofficial um, relationship reality um, as we look at it this morning. But love has a way to bring out our crazy side, right? Um, we do crazy things. Uh, there's a thin line between crazy and not so smart, right? Um, when, when we think about love. And, and we have this example, as we just read from our scripture this morning, um, from God, because love is of God. And we know that no greater love is this, that a man would lay himself down for us. And so we have this example from Jesus from the very start of, of this crazy, irrational love, that he would go to the cross for us and he would die for us. When we truly think about it, that is crazy, right? Crazy. Now, before we really get into things, I, I want you to know that I am not a, a love expert um, like the, the trolls on Frozen. I've, I've heard that movie a thousand times now with our sons in the backseat of the van. Um, the trolls are the love experts. I'm not a love expert, um, it doesn't come easy to me. It, uh, relationships, I'm not that great at. And, and just to kind of set things straight, I'll tell you how much of not a love expert I am. Uh, on our first date, Carrie and I, I called her and told her, I'm running a little bit late. Is that okay? She said yes. And I ended up showing up about an hour and a half late that night. <laughs> But when I rang the doorbell as I was standing there, she just couldn't resist. So we went ahead and went out anyway. And we got to the restaurant, and uh, she uh, ordered. We went to uh, what is one of our favorite restaurants in Russellville, uh, Stobie's. And so if you've, if you've ever been to Stobie's, they have really good cheese dip, too. And so we ordered cheese dip for an appetizer, and the waitress came back, and she said, all right, what would you like to have? And, and being the gentleman, I let Carrie order first. And then when the waitress looked at me, I said, oh, no, thanks, I'm not eating. <laughs> I had already eaten dinner. Um, so uh, strike two, right? Uh, she was not happy with me um, that I did not eat on our first date, and she felt like I was watching her eat. Um, I don't know why she stuck around. Um, the first gift I ever gave to Carrie, I wrapped in a trash bag. <laughs> um, but it was, it was the first sentimental gift I had ever given, so in a way, I, I thought that that was good enough, right? Um, so we do crazy things. We stay around for people that we love because we're crazy, right? Um, you know, I don't know why she said yes and, and hung around, and, and she is truly a saint, and, and that's another sermon for another day. But love makes us do crazy things. And 
there's one thing that in my life I swore up and down I would never, ever, 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 ever do. And for Carrie's 30th birthday, she wanted to do this. So being crazy and in love and not wanting her to hold it over my head for the next 30 years, I agreed to do it. And uh, so you were invited uh, to see the crazy thing that I did for love. Hey, what's your hey, name? Hey, Zach. What are we doing today? We're going skydiving. Skydiving! Carrie already did it, so I can't back out now. Ah! <laughs> she liked it, huh? She did. Yeah? She did. You ready to so, have some fun? I'm ready. It's I'm dangerous, ready. right? It is, yeah? right? And, yeah. and who got you out here? She did. <laughs> yeah. So you can't back out now. I can't. She's gone. Are so you ready to go? It's time to go. So are you I'm ready? ready? All I'm right, ready. man. Let's do it. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Here we go. Again, in true gentleman fashion, I let her go first so that if anything happened, I wasn't doing it. So, um, but once she had gone, I had to go. Uh, so we, we do crazy things um, for love. And uh, you, you may, uh, when the video was going, when, when we got to the ground and she asked how it was, she, uh, she said, so obviously you had to tell him you were ready to go because that's one of the things they said. You have to say, yes, I want to do this. And you heard me say, yeah, let's do it. And I said, no, he didn't even ask me. That's uh, how nervous I was. I don't even remember um, telling him that I was ready to go. But uh, it, was, it was great. And, and now I have to admit that I would do it again in a heartbeat uh, if we had the chance. So um, she was right. And here I am admitting that um, to everyone. So whether it's a a spouse or a friend or, or a family member, no matter who it is, if, if we love them, we, we do crazy things for them. And, and there's an Old Testament story about um, two friends, um, one of which is willing to hold the other one accountable when he has done just something totally um, dumb and irrational and is not thinking straight. And, and his friend calls him out. He holds him accountable because he has this crazy love for him because the person who he's calling out is King David. And, and he has the ability to, to say, you know, off with his head or, or whatever, but he loves David so much he is willing to hold him accountable. And, and just to kind of bring us up to speed on the story, maybe you remember the story of David and Bathsheba. David is walking on the rooftop one evening and he notices Bathsheba taking a bath and he has his guards go and, and call for her and, and her husband is off fighting in the war and, and so she comes to David and, and they end up, uh, she ends up becoming pregnant with him and, and so David, not wanting to admit to this, calls for her husband Uriah to come home from the battlefield so that um, he will sleep with her and all will be right. He will think that it's his child. And so he comes home, but Uriah refuses to go and to eat and, and to sleep with his wife. He sleeps on a mat in the front door because his soldiers are off fighting and he's not willing to do anything like that because his soldiers and his men aren't able to do anything like that. 
And so the next night, David brings him into his castle and, and to his palace, and he gets him drunk, hoping that he will go home and, and be with Bathsheba. And, and again, he refuses. He sleeps on a mat. And so finally, David devises this plan. He'll send Uriah back out to the battlefield. And he tells the commanders to put Uriah on the front lines where the fighting is the heaviest. And when Uriah gets to the front lines, the men are asked to, to draw back without Uriah knowing it. And so he's, he's killed. And here David is thinking he's gotten away with this. Nobody has to know what he has done. And along comes Nathan, his friend, into the picture whom God has sent to confront David. And again, here he is confronting this king, this king. And, and the story, you know, in a lot of ways, it's, it's like a, a, a soap opera or something, the way that the story unfolds with all that David has done. And so we pick up the story in 2 Samuel 12 and Nathan confronting David. The Lord sent Nathan to David, and when he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, and one was rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little lamb he had bought. He raised it and grew it up, and with him and his children, he, it shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, this man who did this must die. He must pay for the lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. So here Nathan is confronting David because he is a friend, because he loves him, and he wants to help hold him accountable. But I'm not quite sure I would necessarily want to go about it this way, right? He, he tells this story to David and, and makes David really mad. And, and so here David is angry, and, and then we read in verse 7, and then Nathan said to David, you are that man. Right? He builds up this anger in him, and then he calls him out, and he says, it's you. You're the one who did this. Again, I'm not sure I would want the king to be extremely mad and upset when I finally called him out on, it's you. You're the one who did it. But Nathan has this, this crazy, irrational love for, for David and being willing to do what God has asked him to do, what God is calling him to do. He confronts him. He holds him accountable. And so this morning we have to ask ourselves, is, is there someone in our life, a, a friend, a spouse, a loved one, who is trying to, who, who is loving us so much with, with this crazy kind of love that they are asking us or telling us, holding us accountable for some deed or some action or something that we have done, and we're not listening, or, or, or maybe we are. Maybe it's time that we should listen. Or maybe there's someone in your life that you love so much that, that you need to hold them accountable. You need to approach them and tell them that what they have done is wrong, but you're scared and you don't know how to do it. We find ourselves in, in those roles sometimes when we love someone. We're asked to call them out. We're asked to hold them accountable. There's another example of this crazy love, and, and we, we hear it from Paul. Paul believed in this crazy love once he is converted and is changed. He's, he's out planting churches. He's out sharing the love of Christ with others. He's writing letters. And then in Philippians, we find that Paul has been arrested once again. And he, since he cannot visit these people that he loves so dearly as he is planting this church, as he is sharing the love of God, that he's writing them a letter once again. And so in the letter, he, he's saying that he is torn. He has this 
crazy love for these people in these churches that he has planted. And he longs to be with them. He longs to be reaching out, administering with them. But he's in prison and he doesn't know what's going to happen next. And so he wants to be with them, but on the other hand, he knows that since he is in prison, in all likelihood, he he may be put to death. And, And so he also says, well, you know, I know what lies ahead. I know what is coming. And I know that Jesus had this crazy love for me, and I know where I will spend eternity. And and so he's torn. He's torn between his love of Christ and going and entering into his eternal home and, and his love for the people whom he has been ministering to and with. And so he doesn't know where exactly he should go. He's torn. He has this crazy love for everyone. And the same goes for us as it did with Nathan calling out David. Sometimes we are asked to call out people. And as Paul was serving and ministering to others because he loved them, we too were called to have and to share this crazy love with others. We're called to a a life of service. Once we say yes to Jesus and this crazy love washes all over us, we are never the same. We are completely and, and totally different. We are called to service. We're to reach out and, and to be the hands and the feet of Christ. And as we read in Matthew, the 25th chapter, I was hungry and you gave me food, thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And then we ask, when was it that we saw you, uh, a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? When did we help you? And Jesus says, what you did for the least of these brothers or members of my family, you did for me. This crazy love of of doing what is uncomfortable for us. This crazy love of stepping out and doing something that we don't really want to do. But because of the love that God had for us, we now have that love for others. And should share with others. We are called to this life of crazy love. Isn't it funny how once this crazy love washes over us, whether it be for a spouse or friend or family, family member, or or just serving others as, as Christ would serve us, this love has the ability to bring out the best in us things that we swore we would never do in our life, things that slowed us down before, things that we thought were never possible, are made possible because of this love. Because Jesus loved us, we now are called to love others. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the crazy love that you had for us. That your son was willing to go to the cross and and die for us. And even though that at times may seem irrational or, or just extremely crazy, we give you thanks. We pray this morning as your love is washing down all around us that we would share that love with others. That we would be willing to go out and go to the areas that you were calling us to go when we're uncomfortable, when we don't want to, when we don't know how. But that we would clothe ourselves with your righteousness and your love. And that we would go out and we would make a difference for you. 
in your name we pray. Amen. This morning, if you have never experienced the crazy love of Christ, I would invite you to do so. And, and it would invite you to come forward during the singing of our final hymn this morning. Um, to say yes to Jesus. Or maybe you would just like to join with this church, this congregation. Say yes to becoming a, a member, to join together in all the craziness and, and the love that we experience and share together. And I would invite you to come forward again during this final hymn. Or maybe you would just like to spend some time this morning embracing and feeling the love that Christ has for you in prayer. And and you're invited to come to the altar and pray. You're invited to pray with Brenda or myself. Or you may just stay in your seat and pray this morning. This time is between you and God as we join together in our hymn of invitation, I Need Thee Every Hour, hymn number 397. Let us stand and join together.
May we all experience the crazy love that Christ has for us. And as we leave this place, may we all go and share that crazy love with others. Because we are not simply called just to come to church, but what are you and I called to be? Be the church. Go in peace.